Hello, welcome to The Exhausted Programmer. My name is Alexander, and today we are talking about awk. If you're catching this video in some way that isn't a part of the playlist, check the description below, and if I can figure out how to put a link to the whole playlist, I will. Also worth mentioning is that there is a GitHub link also in the description below, and in there you'll find uh, all the commands that are used in this program, as well as the data file that I'm using. It's always good to check the description for these videos to see what I have down there, because it could be very helpful and save you some time on copying things down by hand. A good introduction into awk is to understand how it is most commonly used, which seems to be dealing with data in text files or in a bash pipeline that seem to be organized into rows and columns. Often you'll see data that is presented um, in a manner like this, where you can see rows and columns. All this is just random data that I generated, but it follows a pattern of letters, numbers, letters, numbers, letters, numbers, and there is 10 columns total. There is some wrapping around because my text screen is zoomed in for better readability, but in the text file itself, this is all one line. But it's good for us to understand that really lines and columns isn't the way of discussing this, definitely not while looking at the awk documentation. Instead, we have fields and we have records. A record is a full line of data and each field is separated by spaces. That's the normal default behavior and something you'll see in a lot of places in a Linux operating system and in a lot of text files that are designed to be used with all. But it doesn't need to be organized to look as neat as this. We can actually get rid of all the excess spaces. And with this, when we print it out, we'll see that it looks a lot more, well, messy. All we did is get rid of the extra spaces, but now things don't line up perfectly. But that's okay, because again, awk isn't looking at columns like we look at columns. It is looking at each line as a record and each thing separated by space as a field. These values for what separates records and fields are stored as variables inside the awk programming language with capital letter RS for record separator and FS for field separator. And again, the default for the record separator is a new line and for the field separator is a space. If you have multiple spaces between stuff, it just consumes it all as one. So it looks for one or more spaces and that helps it to, or, to know how the data should be coming in. There are actually other ways of determining what is a field. You can do things like set the width of the field or even use some interesting uses of regex to define what is a field as opposed to what separates a field. But these are things we'll cover in a future video. And as I said, a common use of this is to print. When we cat out the data, we get all this, but when we use awk print, what it is doing is taking the data as it's being passed in. And for each line, it is running this command, which is just print. If you don't want to do it this way, you can also do it just with awk and that is to provide it the text file after the command given, and it will execute it that way. If you want to display all the information in a file, obviously cat would be a better solution. Awk though allows us to easily deal with this by the field numbers. Again, if you're thinking of it as columns, we can think of this as the third column when everything was nice and spaced out, but we can print out the third field. So the Z here, the NJ field here, the CI field here with this command, which is just to print with the dollar sign and three, the one, will be the first column, so it indexes at one. And it doesn't have to be a single digit. You can increase this number as the number of fields you have in each record uh, goes up. And it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to understand that you could also print multiple columns at the same time. If we want to print the second and the fourth column, we can do two and four. It does not put a space between them, which makes it kind of hard to read, but sometimes that's what you want. If you do want there to be something that divides them, we can use a comma. And what the comma does is it divides the columns based on what is stored in the OFS variable. And again, as I mentioned, there's variables that are being used. If you want to change any of the values of the variables, it's pretty simple with the dash V flag. So here, if we change the OFS variable to a colon, it will now, instead of putting a space, it will put a colon. Using the dash V flag and the FS variable, we can set that to a comma. And now you can understand how awk can deal with things like comma separated values. Now, if you have a more complicated comma separated value thing with quotations and embedded commas, there's many ways of dealing with that depending on how they're implemented. And we will get to that in a future video. These shorter videos are a new concept for this channel, and I hope that it comes across well. The biggest problem with them is just the time it takes me to make this video and then the next video. And that's probably the worst time for a viewer to watch these because you now have to wait a week to get the next little bit. But hopefully as time goes on and a catalog gets built, it becomes clear that now there's a good single source to get a lot of information about awk for people who just really need to learn that fast. They can watch these short videos, skip the ones they already know, focus on the ones that they want to know more about. And I'll do this also with other uh, programs, mostly focusing on GNU programs, as well as things like uh, RC files for Vim and maybe even Bash RC. 
Uh, these are all ideas for the futures. So if any of those ideas sound good to you, subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, please like it below and thanks for watching.